Shut up and sit down. Well, hello and welcome to a North Wales side by side video. I'm once again on about Ford EcoBoost engines. Uh, in response to the little article last night on the 28th of February 2024, where there was a little article on the BBC Watchdog programme, which is part of the One Show. Ford have said in a statement that it will consider a goodwill gesture on cars up to seven years old so long as there is a Ford history on that car. Now, the way I understand Ford's system and the fact that they are saying it must be Ford service history and looking at the EU directives that were written many years ago stating that you don't have to use a, fran a manufacturer's franchised garage for your servicing as long as it is done to the standards that Ford expect using Ford components meaning you don't have to go to a Ford garage to have your car serviced you can go to a specialist or your local garage as long as it's following the Ford schedule but if that's your case I see Ford using that as a get out clause because it didn't go to Ford for its servicing which according to the EU directives in my opinion and the way I look at the way the rules have been written is totally illegal the way I see it is if the EU have said you don't have to use a franchise dealer for your servicing and you can prove it's been done to the correct standards it doesn't affect the manufacturer's warranty. Anyhow, I'm going to play you the piece now off the BBC Watchdog programme. You take what you like out of the uh, little article, but I don't think anybody with a Ford Eco Boost stands a bloody chance of getting a warranty claim out of Ford. And if you do, they're probably only going to pay half of the repair costs or the replacement cost for a new engine. Once again, thanks for watching a North Wales side by side video. Please consider liking, please consider subscribing. Here's the piece that they played on the BBC last night. Yeah. But first, it's time for Matt with how Ford are stalling when it comes to sorting out their EcoBoost engines. Yes, a car is our biggest investment after our home. It can spell years of credit. So you need something that keeps driving on past that final monthly payment and beyond. But we've been hearing for years about Ford Motors fitted with the EcoBoost engine, which don't do the car maker any credit at all and leave some owners carless and cashless. Ford is the most common car make in the UK and many have EcoBoost engines. They were designed to reduce emissions and deliver fuel economy, but there are bumps in the road. We've been talking about Ford's EcoBoost engines for a long time now, and yet we are still hearing from owners who've had their cars serviced regularly and driven responsibly, only to find that the engines have failed far sooner than they would have expected. Kieran and Katie spent 15 grand on a four-year-old Ford Focus in February last year. It had 50,000 miles on the clock and a full service history. But in December, Kieran had a scare at the wheel. All of a sudden, I got a warning light appear on the dashboard. The power just dropped. There was lorries that were weaving around me. I panicked. The car was taken to an independent garage. Both it and the recovery company suspected that the timing belt inside the engine, also known as the wet or cam belt, had broken up, blocking the oil system. The couple appealed to Ford via their car finance company, which refused their claim for costs. In order to pursue the problem, Ford required further testing, a cost too high for Kieran and Katie. What have you got now? What's your situation? So we've got a lot of money left on the car to pay £3,000 and above for the repair. We've had to ask for family 
to help us just to get someone to fix the engine. It's horrible to be in this situation, it really is. In December, Ford issued a recall notice in the US for certain EcoBoost models, including older Ford Focuses. The recall notice was related to similar problematic drive belts, which would be fixed at no cost to owners. So here's the question. If Ford is going to the huge expense and effort of recalling all those cars in the US, why isn't it doing the same here in the UK, where so many drivers seem to be reporting very similar stories? Natalie's seven-year-old Ford Focus, which has an EcoBoost engine, had done just over 52,000 miles when the car suddenly lost power on the motorway. She got it serviced, but on his way to deliver it back to her, the mechanic called. And he said, you won't believe this, but um, the car's just completely lost power. The breakdown man suspected um, yeah, there was an issue with the wet belt. Ford looked at the car and the engine was replaced at a cost of over five and a half thousand pounds. Has it been serviced regularly? Yes, full service history. It's obviously a fault in the engine. Ford said it's a goodwill payment. We pay 52.5% towards this new engine. So it was £2,700 that we had to fork out. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, well, I've had to borrow that money. Oh, oh, Natalie. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's just, I just felt let down. Yeah. To help explain the sort of issues the EcoBoost engines are having, I'm with independent consulting forensic engineer John De Beck. This is all debris from the cam belt. It's just wearing out, it's shedding its skin. And then what effect does that have on the rest of the engine? Well, it partly clogs up, so the oil delivery to the remainder of the engine is compromised. What do Ford say about how long these belts should last? 100,000 miles, 10 years. They should be confident that their products are going to last for that amount of time in service. It's just not realistic. What can we learn from the US recall? There's certainly a similarity. What they're saying in that recall is that they're going to replace it with a modified one so as to prevent or reduce the likelihood of teeth coming off the belt. It's up to them to put it right. Ford says that it's aware of the issues some customers are experiencing with EcoBoost engines and will help those with premature timing belt failures on cars with a full service history up to seven years old. Ford says it told Kieran that it would need to carry out its own diagnosis before deciding whether it could help. It said that although the car had been serviced regularly, this hadn't been done by a Ford registered provider. For Natalie, Ford says that it offered her the 52.5% towards her car repairs and that she has accepted that amount. Ford, loyal customers have placed their trust in you for years. And now many of them are paying a hefty price for a problem that is not of their making. If you can't offer a belt and braces guarantee for your engines, then maybe more people are gonna start thinking that a Ford is something they simply can't afford.